S corporations are part of entity taxation. And when it comes to the reg exam, this is where candidates lose points on taxation of entities such as S corps, partnerships, estates and trusts. If you're struggling to pass reg, you might be on the wrong road. Get on I-75 and take it to your next pass. S Corp tax return for 2018 called the 1120S. And when's it due? It's due March 15th for a calendar year S Corp. Much like a partnership return, a 1065, is also due March 15th for a calendar year partnership. So what's the difference between an S Corp and a partnership and how they're going to test it on the CPA reg exam? Well, you can see that the S Corp return starts out with the sales on line one, the cost of goods sold on line two, and the gross profit on line three. So it looks like this Bliss Foods Corp, at least at the margins, made some money, 362609 in gross profit. Then when you subtract the business deductions, compensation of officers and repair and maintenance, rents on line 11, taxes on line 12, what kind of taxes would be deductible here as a business deduction for the S Corp? Well, payroll taxes on employees and they have compensation of officers. And officers are considered employees of a corporation. So line seven, compensation of officers, would be a deduction. Whereas your typical partnership salaries are not deductible, right? On the partnership return, the deduction for salaries was other than to partners, unless it was a guaranteed payment, right? It's difficult for a partnership to deduct salaries. But for S Corp, very simple. Everybody works for the S Corp, even the officers. And that's why you see 60000 as compensation of officers. And the tax is on line 12. Part of that tax of 21820 is going to pay the payroll taxes on the officer's compensation or any other salaries and wages if they had any on line 8. So in an S-Corp, you can see some of these business deductions after taxes and licenses, interest on line 13. Notice that interest is an ordinary deduction just like it would be for partnership. This is interest paid. Interest received would be a separately stated item, and we'll get to those in a minute. What we're trying to do here is figure out what's the ordinary income of the S Corp. And that's after we take off all these business deductions, including interest. Then we see depreciation on line 14. Now be careful because if it said section 179 deduction somewhere in the multiple choice question on the exam, that would not appear on page one of the S Corp because section 179 is not an ordinary business deduction. Section 179 will be a separately stated item for the S Corp the same way as it would be in a partnership. So after depreciation, you can see other things like advertising on line 16, employee benefit programs, but there's no employees, so there wouldn't be any employee benefit programs on 18. The only employee would be the officer. See how there's no other salaries and wages on line 8. And then other deductions on line 19. Let's take a peek at what some of those other deductions might be. Other deductions for this S Corp would include things like dues and subscriptions, equipment rental, insurance paid, laundry and cleaning, legal and professional, office expense, supplies, telephone. So any of these normal business related costs would be deducted to arrive at ordinary income of the S Corp. See this 128,000 total, 128,283? This is going to go back to page one. So the 128,283 on line 19, that total other deductions, goes back to page one on line 19, and that becomes another deduction. And altogether on line 20, the total deductions of 328,319 is subtracted from the total income on line six to get ordinary business income of 34,290. And that's the total ordinary business income of the S Corp, not including any separately stated items. Much like we saw for a partnership, page one is dedicated just to the business. 
Now, we have a profit of 34290 What happens to this profit? I don't see any tax being paid in these lines below line 21 where the ordinary business income is. There's no tax paid. And that's because, much like for a partnership, this ordinary business income will pass through to the stockholder, to the owner. In this case, there's one owner of this S-Corp. How do we know? We know because on line I, towards the top of this page one, it says enter the number of shareholders who were shareholders at any part during the year, and it just says one. So there's one shareholder in this S-Corp, and one is the minimum number of shareholders in any corporation. If this were a partnership, you would need two owners, two or more, but in a corporation, one is enough. While you could certainly have more than one stockholder in an S corporation, you can have up to 100 stockholders in an S corporation. One is the minimum, minimum number of stockholders in an S corporation is one, and there's one in this S corp. Now let's meet that one owner of this S corp. His name is Anthony Clayton, and you can see him here on this Schedule K-1. And Schedule K-1, just like it is for a partnership, is the link between the S-Corp return and the 1040 for the owner, Anthony Clayton. So whoever prepares this S-Corp return has to make sure that they give Anthony Clayton his K-1 so that Anthony can take all these figures that you see here and bring them back to his 1040 and include them when he files his 1040 for 2018. And that's the reason why the S-Corp return is due a month earlier than the individual return, right? The S-Corp returns due March 15th, the individual returns due April 15th, and the reason is to give this S-Corp shareholder time to prepare his 1040 once he gets his K-1. So, what is a K-1 and what happens with all these figures? Well, we saw on page one of the S-Corp return that they had a profit of 34290 And that profit has to go home with Anthony Clayton for him to pick it up as income and pay the tax on it. So Anthony's going to pay all the tax on that 34290 that you see on line one of this K-1. Anthony's going to pay all the tax on that. The S-Corp isn't going to pay any tax because the S-Corp, like a partnership, is a pass-through entity. The income passes through from the entity to the stockholder, and this K-1 is how it gets reported to the stockholder, so Anthony knows how much to pick up on his 1040. Now, here's where it goes on the 1040. It goes to Schedule 1, line 17. And you can see on line 17, it says rental, real estate, royalties, partnerships, S corporations, and there's the 34,290. So profit from a S corporation or a partnership on Schedule K-1 gets picked up by the individual on 1040 Schedule 1, line 17. So now we know the ordinary business income from the S corp would go to Schedule 1, line 17. What about the interest income and the ordinary dividends that it looks like is passing through also from this S corp to Anthony Clayton? That's got to go back to Anthony Clayton's 1040 also, but where do interest and dividends get reported? They'll go to Schedule B of the 1040. Hey, it's Darius. Hopefully by now you're saying, this guy's pretty easy to follow. Well, that's what it's like to be part of the I-75 course. Every video you watch, you're saying that same thing. Hey, this is pretty easy to follow. I understand it. And only once you understand it, Will you have confidence to be able to answer the questions? Thus, the term separately stated items, interest, income, and ordinary dividends, would be separately stated from the ordinary business income because they go to different places on the 1040. So there won't be any figure that totals up all these items on the K-1 because they go to different places on the 1040. What you will see for an S-Corp, just like we saw for a partnership, is a Schedule K. The Schedule K is a summary of all the individual items that are on K-1s. They get reconciled on Schedule K. So since there's only one stockholder, then what you saw on the K-1, those amounts will be equal to the total that you see on Schedule K. The ordinary business income, line one, would be 34290 and it all went to Anthony because he was the only shareholder, so he got the one and only K-1. Same with the dividends and the interest. 
the amount on Anthony's K1 is exactly what, the, what we see on Schedule K here. But if there were more than one K1, Schedule K would have the totals, and Schedule K1 would have each owner's proportionate share. So if there were two equal owners, then you would see under the dividends, they would each get $100 in dividends. So the CPA exam will make sure that you're somewhat familiar with the flow of an 1120S, just like with a partnership return. And this total ordinary business income of $34,290, you're going to have to know how that's calculated and then what happens to that total, how it goes on to the K and the K1s of the various owners. And if there's only one owner, then obviously they get 100%. Now, what if it tells you on the CPA exam that although this S-Corp earned 34290 in 2018, what if they tell you that Anthony did not get any of this money? That 34290 let's say he didn't, he didn't get any. All he got was a $60,000 on line 7 compensation of officers, and he'll get a W-2 for that, and he'll pay tax on that. But what about that 34290 What if he didn't get any of that 34290 profit? Would he have to pay the income tax on it anyway? Yes. Yes, because somebody has to pay the tax on that 34290 and the S-Corp's not paying it because this is a pass-through entity. So whether Anthony gets 34290 or doesn't get any of it, he still is responsible for picking up all that income. Where? On Schedule 1, Line 17. Right there, Schedule 1, Line 17, rental real estate, royalties, partnerships, S-Corps. If you have a client that has a couple of partnerships or S-Corps or maybe owns a rental property, this Line 17 here of Schedule 1 is going to be a busy place because there's going to be a lot of things that tie into this Line 17. Even if they just had one partnership and one S-Corp, you'd see that this Line 17 here would summarize both of those totals. Maybe you have a loss from the partnership and a profit from the S-Corp. That would net out on line 17. Hopefully you enjoyed this video on an overview of an S-Corporation tax return. Go to cpaexamtutoring.com and hit me up where it says Ask Darius. You can ask me any question. I'll get back to you personally.